Welcome to this virtual tour of Dundonald Castle. My name's Dave, I'm one of the guides there and I'll be your guide for this tour. First of all, I think a little bit of background history. So the castle dates from the second half of the 14th century. It was built by a chap called Robert Stewart. Robert was a member of the very famous and influential Stewart family. Robert himself was the grandson of Robert Bruce. And in 1371, Robert becomes King Robert II. And he's the king that starts the well-known Royal Stuart Dynasty, which lasted over 300 years. Castle itself is in the form of a tower house, and it's one of the earliest and largest examples of its type. And it was probably used as a hunting lodge by Robert. The first photograph is a nice sort of general overview of the site and the wall in the foreground that's the remains of the enclosure or barnkin wall the grass area immediately behind that is the outer courtyard of the castle nowadays it's just grass but back in the day that would have been full of buildings workshops stables the blacksmith maybe the brew house all that sort of thing all the things you need to keep the castle going really and we know from the archaeological evidence that if you were to go through the grass level through the medieval layer, there's actually five Iron Age roundhouses in that grass area alone. And in fact, the occupation hill goes back even further than that. There have been over 200 shirts of Bronze Age pottery as well. So the occupation hill really goes back about 4,000 years, so way before even the medieval period. Anyway, you'd also be surprised to learn that this current castle isn't the only one that, that was built on the hill. Uh, there was another one in the 13th century, uh, probably a larger castle and had at least one twin towered gatehouse uh, made with massive ashless stone blocks. That castle was very badly damaged twice in the wars of independence and there's very little of that above ground. One or two little bits and pieces are built into the current castle, but most of it um, is lost from view at the moment. So now in this next shot, we've come a lot closer to the entrance of the castle. In the foreground, you can see the remains of two rooms or small buildings. The one to the right, the slightly larger one with a piece of stub wall still standing, that actually predates the current castle. So that's part of the previous castle. Whereas the smaller room to the left is contemporary to the current castle. In the background, there's a piece of fairly tall ruined wall with a the remains of a window at the base of it. That's actually the newest part of the whole castle and that's part of an extension that was added late 14th, probably early 15th century and that's extra accommodation. At the base of that uh, there's a small stubby piece of wall that's actually part of the older castle's fortifications and that's now built into the current castle. And just going back to the stub wall on the first building that I mentioned, just above that you can see what looks like a large window with a smaller window immediately to the right. That large window is actually the main entrance of the castle uh, and that's typical of a tower house. Your main door being on the first floor and that's the entrance that um, Robert's guests would most likely have used to enter and leave the castle. And then the actual entrance that we use at the moment is just right in the centre of the photograph and that's a sort of a, a servant's entrance, if you like. And um, we're going to head that way now. So now in this shot, we're stood in front of the door of the castle. And we're looking back the way we've just come, really. The wall to the left is the stub wall of the older building. And the piece of wall in the background, that's part of the barnkin wall again. And really, I'm just including this photograph to give you some idea of the height of Dundonald Castle Hill and the way that it dominates the whole area. So now we've entered the castle, we're facing south and we're in what appears to be a grand hall with a beautiful barrel vaulted ceiling. But don't be deceived, this castle plays tricks on you. We're actually looking at two floors at the moment. So the door that you enter the castle via, that's to the left of the shot. And immediately above that you can see a walkway that goes along the left hand side of the wall. And that level is about where the ceiling would have been back in the day. So 
we're actually in what was once the cellars, which uh, that's typical for a tower house to have the cellars on the ground floor. And this would have been subdivided up into many small rooms. And it was probably quite an unpleasant place to be back in the day. It would have been dark. If it was lit at all, probably lit with tallow candles. Uh, they're made of animal fat, they're smelly, smoky. So it was probably quite an unpleasant part of the castle to be in. The far right of this shot, you can see there's a semicircular alcove. It looks a bit like a fireplace, but I don't think it ever was. It looks to me like it's part of the older castle. The, the way that alcove is built, the type of stones and the size of stones is very different to the rest of the castle. So I suspect that's a, that's a leftover from the older castle. So now in this shot, we've um, turned through 180 degrees. We're still in the cellars and the door is now on the right hand side. In the background on the left, you can see a rather nice painting of a hunting scene, which was done for us. And that ties in nicely with the purpose of the castle. And just to the side of that is a small window that looks a bit like an arrow slit. It's probably not though, to be honest, it's a little bit shallow quite narrow the field of view for an archer is really very narrow and it's probably not practical as an arrow slit I think it's just a window to give some light to the sellers although having said that um, close inspection of the stones that form the aperture look like they've been repurposed from somewhere else in the castle so it's likely a little bit of medieval recycling that used the stones that did form an arrow slit in the older castle and to the right in the background, you can see a painting of two people. That's a copy from the Seton Armorial, and that's Robert and his queen, Euphemia. Now, Euphemia was his second wife. His first wife was Elizabeth, but she died before he became the king. So, although Robert was married twice, Euphemia was his only queen. Now, Robert fathered 21 children. Yes, you heard me right, 21 children. And that probably goes some way to explaining the longevity of the Stuart dynasty, over 300 years, as I said earlier. And certainly by the time of Robert's death, 11 of the 15 earldoms in Scotland were controlled by the Stuarts. Uh, it also led to a fair amount of sibling rivalry and no small amount of blood was uh, spilt within the family. Just to the left of Euphemia, you can see a stone doorway. That takes you to the servant staircase uh, that the servants would use to access the next floor up, and uh, that's where we're going to head now. We've now climbed the servant staircase, and we're in the lay hall, or the lower hall of the castle. And this is another room that would look very different back in the day. The floor obviously would have gone all the way across. And there are little remnants of plaster still left on the wall and the ceilings, which suggests that the, both the walls and the ceilings were covered with plaster and paint. And probably wall hangings as well, hanging down to uh, make the place look nice and warm a little bit um, when King Robert was in residence. To the left of Santa Camera Shot is the front door that I mentioned earlier on the first floor. And above and behind us was once the Minstrel's Gallery. If you're a guest of King Robert, this is where you'd have been entertained. This is the Royal Banqueting Hall. And this room was once full of people and alive with music and laughter. But of course, the King isn't entertaining every night. The Lay Hall is a multi-purpose room. This is likely where local justice would have been meted out and a little bit more on that a bit later on. It's also where the staff who work in the castle would have been fed, so a medieval staff canteen. And in fact, one of the minstrel's jobs would have been to announce the times of meals because people don't have watches in those days. So when you hear the music playing, you know it's time to eat. And at the end of the day, a lot of people would have slept in this room as well. Um, this room would have been nice and warm 
you might be able to make out the towards the far end there's a couple of chimneys that's where the heating is for this room so there'd have been three standing braziers at least one either side and you can also see some windows at the far end as well one in the center and then one either side so we know that's the top end of the room so king robert would have been sat at the far end of the room from where we are Also at the end of the balcony you can see a doorway. That, believe it or not, is one of the most important doorways in the castle. Because that leads you from the semi-public area, if you like, that we're in right now, into the more private spaces of the castle. Through that doorway to your left is a spiral staircase. We'll be going up there later on, but right now we're going to head straight forward into another part of the castle. And now we're at the far end of the castle. The banqueting hall that we just left is to our right. And the new extension that I mentioned earlier, that's right above us. The room we're in now, we're not really sure what it is. There's, there's really nothing architecturally to give us any clues. Um, so we'll leave that really to the visitor to interpret uh, the way they like. But you can see that it leads us towards another quite dark and mysterious looking room behind that iron gate so um, without further ado we'll step through that gate and we'll pop inside. Welcome to the famous prison and pit at Dundonald Castle. Now I know the photograph didn't show you the whole room but you can take it from me it's what the estate agents describe as bijou. And the most obvious feature in the room is the rather precarious looking vertical ladder down into the pit below. So if this is a prison, who was kept here? Well, we do know from the records that by the year 1526, the castle has been granted to a chap called William Wallace. Well, no, not that William Wallace, a different one. And the Wallace family, they used the castle for about 100 years or so. And at least one of them, a chap called John Wallace, was very powerful in the local church. In fact, he could call Kirk sessions or church law courts if you like even without clergy being present maybe they took place next door in the banqueting hall but if you were found guilty of breaking local church rules you were locked up for a period of time in Dundonald Castle and of course this is the period of witch trials as well big fear of witchcraft around about that time and a number of the local residents were accused of practicing witchcraft and in fact two people from one of the local farms a lady called Kate McTeer and a chap called Patrick Ramsey both met very sticky ends maybe they spent the last few days on earth in the castle and even further back in 1466 we know that James III locked up a personal persons unknown for a period we don't know who they were but we know that it cost him three pounds for their upkeep Down in the pit now we have resident our local pets, our European cave spiders or metamenardi if you prefer. They're a rather large spider, they're described as a large jawed orb weaving spider and in the summer they make these rather cute looking egg sacks that hang down, they look a little bit like Christmas decorations and they lay two to three hundred eggs in those and if you pop down, especially in the summer, you'll see them wandering around on the ceiling. That's the good news that they're on the ceiling. The bad news for you is that the ceiling's right only just above head height. So, top tip, if you have long hair, I recommend just checking it when they come out, make sure you haven't got any residence. So was the room actually built as a prison? Probably not, actually. Um, the only other feature in the, in the room is a, a hole in the wall that has been interpreted as maybe a latrine. Um, it could also be a space for a laver or a hand wash basin, uh, especially if the room is used by the constable or keeper of the castle, and uh, that's the guy that would run the castle on behalf of the king. Or it could even be a space for a piscina, which is a bowl for the local castle priest to uh, wash the chalices and, and goblets after the church service. 
again, it's another room that um, as a visitor you'd have to interpret yourself really. So I think what we'll do is we'll head up the spiral staircase that I mentioned earlier and we'll go to the, the top room in the castle. So now we've climbed the spiral staircase and we're in the, the last room that I have to show you and I've saved the best till last. This is the most magnificent room in the whole building. This room was built with no expense spared. This room was designed to impress and probably intimidate you a little bit. This room exuded power and authority. And that's because this is King Robert's part of the castle. This is where he's living and working. The features that we have down the far right behind the small metal fence, that's the remains of the king's private chapel, his oratory. And straight ahead through the arch, turn to the right, there's his private latrine chute, and space for wash basin, so royal en suite. And to the left is the another room, which is probably the king's wardrobe or maybe a strong room. Just out of sight to the left of shot is the remains of a large fireplace, so the original 14th century fireplace. And to the right, there's another fireplace which is added a bit later, probably 1500, so maybe the room was divided up at that point. But I think when this castle is brand new, this is one large room. Um, a room for Robert to work from, but probably private dining and more private entertaining as well. So this sketch is of the same room, but I quite like this one because it just gives you a bit more of a closed in feeling, more feeling of a room than, um, than the photograph does. You can see what I mean about the ceiling, um, what an impressive room this, this would have been. And um, also showing in this sketch, just to the left is that fireplace I mentioned earlier. I just quite like this sketch because it just gives you more impression of it being a room than the, than the photograph does with the ceiling missing. And so finally, I just want to leave you with a bit of a mystery, a little bit of a conundrum that, um, who knows, maybe you'll come up with the answer. But this shot shows one of the shields that we have on the outside of the castle. It's actually John, Earl of Carrick. But the real mystery is the carving beneath it, the two lions or leopards. And what's unusual about those is they're facing each other, but both tails are between their legs. Now in heraldry that's a sign of cowardice or submission and it's odd that both animals will be facing each other and both submitting. Only other thing I've seen that's even remotely similar to that is the Butte Mesa and the line in the centre of that has its tail between its legs. It's the only thing I can find that compares to it. And the other odd thing about our carving is if you look closely at the front paws, they seem to be holding hands as well, or maybe shaking hands. And we really can't work out what that means. We use it as an emblem because it's a nice carving, but for the life of us, we can't work out what it means. So if you can come up with an idea, your guess is as good as ours. Anyway, that's the end of the tour. Hopefully you enjoyed it and um, maybe it's giving you the taste to when you can come up and visit us in the flesh and uh, we'll give you a proper tour. Thank you very much. <laughs>